But I want to show you something here. Now this is going to be a Bible. I'm going to show you that I got in 1996. This was my go-to Bible as an NCV. And uh, here it is right here. Um, let's see, I'll put the light on here. Here we go. Uh, the cover got messed up and fell off. But I got a lot of use out of this um, back in when I was younger. And uh, it's just a lot of writing in here, a lot of a lot of uh, stuff. I study this Bible well off and home pretty good for like uh, eight years. I think it was about eight, you know, about twelve years um, when I was living in South Carolina. But let me show you something here, as far as what I was talking about. This is what the NCV says. This is what the Lord says: Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Footstool. So, do you think you can build a house for me? Do I need a place to rest? My hand made all things. All things are here because I made them. What I really want to get to you is this: There are the people. These are the people I am pleased with. Those who are not proud or stubborn. And who fear my word. Okay. Uh, who fear my word. Alright. Let's see what the message Bible says. And this is what I kind of got. Later on. The message Bible here. <coughs> By Eugene Patterson. Peterson. Whatever you call him. And. Uh, so. He has at one time. I was a. Uh, multiversion only <laughs> if you want to call me that but please don't call me King James Version only today because I'm not that oh uh, let's see here it says but there's something I'm looking for a person simple and plain reverently responsive to what I say God said all he had to say in his word he already spoke his word, right? But this is this is what chokes me up every time I read it. And sometimes I show it outwardly, sometimes I, it's, it's held within. But he says, But the, to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. A poor and a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Now that's not talking about fear or shaking, or dread or anything. That's just, that's talking about emotion, being choked up, you know. And it's like with uh, Ezra the scribe was reading the law to the people, and they were um, moved and they cried and everything. And it's like Josiah, Second uh, Kings, I believe. And how he uh, was um, moved by the reading of the law, and he ripped his clothes, you know. So that's that's what it does for me. And I think everybody should have an experience like that. God's word should so affect you, should so move you when you read it, you know. And these other versions, you don't really have a lot of that. People just read it just to read it, or just have that you know it's like what does God's word do for you you know what I mean what does what can God's word do for you you know reading his word should be the most important thing in our lives you know I mean study to show thyself approved right and the more we study God's word and every time we hear like for me every time I hear somebody read in the authorized version like um, sometimes I'll go I've been looking, I've been going to the uh, Mormon thing here, and uh, they have a couple videos that have um, uh, people portraying the Lord and the disciples, and their their script is the scripture. They're they're speaking the same thing that comes out of the Bible, except for the narration. And it just when I heard that, it just moved me. It just it just wow. 
you know it, it just re it really did because it was so important to hear um, God's word being spoken even by a man you know and <laughs> with the um, with the NCV and the message I, I don't get that because it's the words that are important the words move my heart and soul well it's been about uh shoot oh my foot's falling asleep dang on it uh it's been about uh 10 11 hours since i last made that other part there and i, I want to give a great example of that um in psalms 119 and also let you know that just the right words god gives us just the right words and his word to stir up that emotion, to stir up the love for his truth, you know. And um, when I read it in an NCV or a message or, or what have you, um, I can't find it like I can find it in the authorized version. Um, it, it, it stirs up the emotions, and it did this with you know, King David in Psalm 119. It really stirred up his emotion because he loved God's word. He loved his truth. And so whenever people start resting the scriptures and they twisting them to their own words or indeed they add, take away and change what God has said, then that is like a love letter that God writes us. When you alter somebody's love letter, it's like a, a prisoner sending a letter to their loved one, you know, or vice versa, or a loved one sending a letter to a person who's in prison and it gets to the processing and stuff and somebody re um, redacts some of the words or crosses them out and adds something else which they don't do that but what if they did because they don't want that person to uh, experience that love and affection that that person has given them you know uh, which I, like I said I don't think that's happened but maybe in certain situations it has because they want that person to be um, in control who can to be controlled so you never know you know and somebody gets the letter and they redact certain things and they cross it out and like change the words and that's the same with us uh, whether people who do these bible versions or what have you they do it willingly or ignorantly um uh you know they they need to trust what god has said if they're a christian if they are believers then they need to believe scripture alone and let it be what was it has he what saith the scripture as it is in um, the authorized version that's my opinion of course and people can say all oh, they want well it's some archaic you know it's not archaic it's still alive today you know and and the way you read it is one thing uh the way you speak it and rewrite it is another you know and um uh to to your own thoughts and desire as far as gaining money and popularity because you're a doctor or theology or heavy but anyway I'm going to give you a couple examples of uh, what, I'm, what I was talking about here I'm going to give the Psalm 119 and as you know there are a lot of verses in 119 and we can sit here the whole day and this is by the Hebrew alphabet I believe uh, let's see here uh, 176 verses of uh, Psalm 119 there. Oh, <clears throat> let's see here. It says in 111. Let me back that up a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, let me go from Al Aleph. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. What does that mean, diligently? You know, think about that. Um, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Verse 7. Heed here thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. See how precious the word was. I mean, did I mention that was King David? No, I'm sorry if I didn't. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I would delight myself in thy statutes. I would not forget thy word. 
verse 16. Uh, princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be thinking on his word continually. Because to think on his word, which is higher than his name, we know the, that God, what God has said in his word is the truth, is the truth. So we don't have to go to any man, to any teacher, or biblical teacher, what have you, professor or theology, seminary, whatever, and say, what saith the Lord? Because the Lord has already said what he has said in his word. So there has to be a reliable Bible out there. And you know what? There is. Okay, that's my opinion, but I'm just telling you. <clears throat> Verse 27, make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works well, who can make you understand that the Holy Spirit does right John fourteen twenty six. verse 32 I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart give me understanding and I shall keep thy law yea I shall observe it with my whole heart and that's what we do when we tremble at God's word We it just moves our heart it's not so much of a fear thing as in afraid or dread or what have you. Oh, I'm going to go to hell because I'm a sinner kind of thing. No, it's because we know we're sinners. That's why we tremble. And because we, we don't want to upset. The, um, we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. And we, we, um, we're we ashamed. We're hurt because of our own sin. That's why we tremble. Trembleth, as the Bible says. So it, it affects us. So God's word... Um, does that to us because it is truth and the man should keep his hands out of it and not manipulate it to make it say something else to control people or to get money from it which a lot of people do whether they do it ignorantly or what have you uh, establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear again that's not fear like ooh this is a renown this respect you know love uh, for who the Lord is and that he is God and he is sovereign. Godly fear. Uh, let's see here. And take not thy word of the truth early out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. Verse 43. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and I will not be ashamed. Remember the, um, the Lord said, um, It is not you who speaks, but it is the Spirit who gives you the words and stuff. I think that's what it relates to that. And for verse 47, And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. Why do you love God's word? Because it is truth. And people who know truth love God's word. How can you love an NCV or Message Bible when it doesn't tell you the truth or NIV Bible? When you read these words, when you read the Elizabeth in English, well, to me, you know, it would seem because everybody says, "Oh, how I love it!" So beautiful, the Bible in English, you know, Elizabeth in English is one of the best there is. It is the best. Some people say it is the best there is. So how do how do you how can you say that if you don't know it to be truth in your heart when you read these words, when you read the NCV or Message? Can you feel the same effect from a King James Bible? Can you feel the same effect from those versions of the Bible? that you might feel in the authorized version just tell me I want to know I really do okay so if this cuts off I mean hey you, you got an earful already my hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments which I have loved and I will meditate in thy statutes that was verse 48 Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Verse 49. This is my comfort and my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Verse 50. Because of the wicked. Oh, well, sorry. Honor hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have I been, have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the, in the night. And I have kept thy law. Verse 55. This I had because I kept thy precepts. Verse 56. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I will keep thy words. Verse 57. 
At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Verse 62. Let's see here. Verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I been, now have I kept thy word. I mean, he just goes on and on and on about the love for God's word, about keeping God's word, about keeping his truth. And uh, Jod, verse 73, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. That's what you get from the Holy Spirit, to understand the word. I mean, are we asking that when we come to other Bible versions? Are you asking that? Can you understand what a man has put in there and place what God has already said in the authorized version? Can you? I'm just wondering. Okay. Uh, verse 82 Mine eyes fell for thy words, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? Verse 83 For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. Hmm. Wow. Verse 115 Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. 118 Thou hast trodden down all of them that err from the statutes, from thy statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. That's what we need to be doing. Verse 23 my eye, Mine eyes fell for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate ear every false way. That's 103. Uh, verse 99. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from the air every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. So don't rely on another man teaching you from its MacArthur Study Bible or what have you or this and that study Bible, these study guides. Then I mean compare it, you know. I'm not telling you to rely on the King James Version Bible, I'm just telling you to rely on the Lord to get you where you need to be. How about that? One thirty. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. Uh, rivers of waters run down to my eyes because they kept thy, not thy law. 136. Here we go. 140. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Did I say that right? Yep, I did. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. How can you love God's word if it's not truth? How can you love God's word if the right words are not in there that he put in there himself using so many odd translators in the English? Oh, you know what I mean? He got You got two or three groups that didn't like one another. You know what I mean? They didn't want to have nothing to do with one another, yet they all came together and got the Bible straight. They, made, they had many, a lot of translations. He said, well, we need to make a better one. The one that really gets the truth out there, which one breaks people's hearts and makes them want to come to the Lord. We got to put the right words in there. And they didn't do that on their own. They did it by, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And they didn't agree with one another. They didn't like one another. But when they came together to do the work that the Lord had given them to do, this is what we got over 400 years later. Yes, there were misprintings. They were... Uh, gra graphical things that needed to change, but it did not change in doctrine whatsoever. It did just change from S O N N E to S O N, stuff like that. Spelling the words. There's fleeth, flieth, whatever you want to say, you know? Cambridge, Oxford. 160. Thy word is true from the beginning, okay? And every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. The heart, heart standeth in awe of thy word. All right. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. 
Does your heart stand in all God's word? I rejoice at the word, at thy word, as one findeth great spoil. Does your heart rejoice at the word when you find great treasure like that? Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Verse 165. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. You can look those up if you want to. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. And on and on and on and on again. If you can read the Message Bible, NCV or NIV or Christian Holman Standard Bible or MEV or ESV, and you find that kind of stuff that moves your heart, let me know about it. Read it in this book right here, and if it don't move your heart, please let me know about it. I want to know. <laughs> you know, I want to know what's wrong with me. Okay, really do. But you know, you know what really gets me is that how much the Lord uses His Word. Whenever I hear people say things or certain things or whatever, the first thing in my brain does is cross references back to the God's Word, and I remember the Scripture. And sometimes it pops in my head about certain scriptures. Then I go look it up. Or somebody can say, be saying a certain scripture. And instantly my mind is working to complete the rest of the scripture. And, or verbally. And it verbally comes out of my mouth. And I'm completing the scripture along with them. Or along with some audio. You know. And it's wow. It chokes me up. Because. Like I said, I read the Bible about six times on my seventh time. That's not to brag about anything, but I mean, it's just amazing how God uses his words to help you not forget. It's not that you have to remember all the scripture, but it's in your heart, it's in your mind, it's in your soul. So whenever somebody's reading it out or somebody's reciting it or something on the YouTube or whatever else, you kind of, in a way, finish it and you're speaking it along with that thing or person. Or if a certain body says something about something, then your brain instantly cross verses, cross references with a part of scripture in your mind. It's like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, and you start looking it up. And that's what God's word does to you, if you understand what I mean. Well, hopefully you got something out of this for something that's over 20 minutes long. And God bless and take care and stay safe out there. And keep yourself clean, keep your nose clean, keep your mouth clean, elbows clean, hands clean. You know, and don't let fear rule your life with this thing, the coronavirus. And uh, you, you know, you know, as the love and outcome says, he's got this. You know, God's got this. And um, put your faith and trust in him. Don't let fear overrule your life. But let love and patience and kindness and by the love of Jesus Christ rule in your life. See you.